House, who are all present, Attorney Derek Jones and the Treasurer Lisa Mulaney. Good. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of August 6, 2017, regular session. Any additional corrections? A couple minor corrections. Saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Citizens input. Rizzi, if you could please state your name. Thank you, George. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm Debbie Scott, and I have two things. First, I want to say thank you for the money that was given to the library for the glasses for the eclipse. It was very generous. Thank you. Um, the second thing, and maybe this was already addressed before, but the um, when we have the fair, there are several, several, several people in town. I don't know if it's everybody, but lots of people that have no cell service. We have no phones, and lots of people don't have landlines anymore. They just have cell phones. You get about a mile, maybe two mile out of town, and all of a sudden you have a cell phone again. Um, I talked to several people that live in Plymouth and they said that um, when a while back during blueberry time um, it used to be a problem in Plymouth as well and they had to upgrade or do something I don't know what because I don't, I don't know all the technical terms for what they had to do um, but it used to be that way for them during blueberry time is there something we need to look into to do different during that week because it just seems to be every year it's it's getting worse and worse that it has people. to do with the carrier. It has nothing to do with the town. Because there's so many people using data. It seemed to only be AT&T. You yeah, have AT&T and I had the same problem. Right. It seemed to only be AT&T and when I called them they said that nobody had reported any trouble. And so, I know, and so there is an app that you can use, and so I got on Facebook after the fair was over, because I was like everybody else, thought it was because of the fair, mm -hmm. they had a problem with their tower. So it was totally on them. Really? Because yes. last year I had the same problem too. Last really? year I had the same problem and I was with a different carrier. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, we yeah. were with a different carrier this year. Or consumer cellular, but consumer cellular and AT and T and Verizon are on two different carriers right. on the same tower because every tower has both, and because it's just a repeater tower. CGMA is the one broad carrier, mm -hmm. and AT and T is the one, and all those other subsidiary mobiles use that. And then you've got Verizon and those networks that will use that theirs and theirs. I don't remember the their acronym, but they have their own carrier, and so you're looking at which one is on that one that. Dead because you've got so much data usage, it'll overload the server and it'll kick itself out to save itself. And then the tower on that network goes dead. Right. So it just is very coincidental that as soon as the fair starts, it happens. And as soon as the fair ends, it goes away. And we get our phones back. Yeah, those up, like you said, it's, it's the carrier, it's not from the town. We don't even we don't even have AT and T on our tower here. So it's got nothing to do with us. We're, we're aware of it, but there's really nothing we can do. Okay. So, anyone else? Citizens input. Yes, sir. Hi. I have a report for NC. I have a report, but I don't know if I. Who are you? I. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Well, I guess I am on start. Mark Lombard, <laughs> or MCEDC, but I got the report, but I don't know if I do it to insist. It's input, so if you just stick me in somewhere, like old business or something. Or something I was doing that for a while, but then you kept switching. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I want to see if you were paying attention. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Mr. Roberts, I see you out there. Do you have any citizens' input tonight? No, not much input. You you got my paper, didn't you? I yes. 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 Today? Yes. Yesterday. yesterday. Okay. Um, I personally didn't get it. Sorry to say, my my carrier like my email don't come up half the time. Sorry about that. I'll check and see if I did get it today. Mr. Roberts sent us a letter regarding the purchase of property. And you probably don't. Wrong email. Right. It, so you do have it? I will, I'll reset it, and he would like a response within seven days. Okay. Yes. So well, it, it probably came through my email and I didn't, I have not even checked my town email today. So I'd be my fault if I didn't get it. But Suzanne said she yes, has it. I didn't know if you had any interest or not. And your property out the highway? Yeah. I think it's something we need to talk about and discuss. I would not say no. <laughs> That would be something like Suzanne just said, we'll have to look at and definitely get back with you here shortly. Yeah, that'd be all right. Okay. Uh, we've got a pile problem in there with the county. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We've got another problem with the road. And I'd like for them to do something too. Even if you don't do anything, I'd like for you to put pressure on that. The highway department. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much pressure we can put on. They never really paid for all the ground they took the first time. So I think we can put a lot of pressure on them. I'm not positive. Yes. I don't know if they ever dealt with the condemnation or not, but especially with the state. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch with you. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. We'll all get that email and we'll look at it and we'll get yeah. back in touch with you. I'll leave you alone. All right. Thank you for coming, though. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else, citizens' input? I didn't do it. If not, we'll move on to a 2018 budget. Get on, Eric. Thank you. Okay, um, everybody just kind of sit here. You're <laughs> <laughs> This is not any of the formal process of your budget. Um, your public hearing for your budget will be your second meeting next month, and then your adoption will be in October. This is more just uh, the council for the last several years has liked me to come and do a brief kind of summary before you get into the actual formal and the public hearing process and all of that. So that's kind of what tonight is. Take maybe 15, 20 minutes, try to be brief and answer any questions. Um, same format you've seen in the past. It's a cash flow format by fund. So if you start on page two, this is looking at calendar year 2017. So what we're more than halfway through right now. The reason we take a look at 2017 is the same way that the LGF, Department of Local Government Finance, that's who approves your budgets and tax rates. They do it the same way. They have to estimate what your cash balance is gonna be January 1 of 18 to really work your 2018 budget, okay? So this is your budget you adopted last year. We have to estimate where you're going to end this year to start next year's budget discussion. That's all these first two pages are for. Um, the other piece that's important to remember, we go through this every year, is um, the DLGF assumes you spend 100% of the budget you, you 
you adopted. So a lot of your funds, you guys don't spend. I think last year I gave you kind of an analysis of what you usually spend compared to, it's a lot of times closer to like 90% or less. But the DLGF has to assume you spend every single dollar you appropriated in 17 because you, they've already given you the authority to do that, okay? One item I will show just to re kind of reiterate what we talk about every year, your general fund is obviously your biggest fund and, and, and the biggest uh, kind of culprit of this. Uh, if you go down four or five lines from the bottom on page two in the general fund column, you see where it says beginning cash and investments, $944,000. So everybody's here on that? Mm -hmm. So that's where you ended 2016. That's your beginning cash balance for 2017. At this point last year when we did this exercise, and I did the same type of analysis, I told you what we estimated you did in 2016 with, we estimated $800,000. So what's that tell me? Either your revenues came a little bit better, which I checked, they came a little bit higher, but more, the, the bigger culprit was you spent about $130,000, $140,000 or less than your budget in general. That's a continuation of trends year after year where you just budget more than you spend. So I want you to keep that in mind when you look at the highlighted line there in the general fund, that's your cash flow for 2017 where it says negative 176,000. Keep in mind if you're spending trends are similar in past years, you'll probably be pretty close to a balanced budget. Everybody recalls this conversation from last year. I won't kind of beat that dead horse, but. Um, and you, you would see that in most of your funds. NBH was another one. You ended actually well over $100,000 better than what we thought. You did spend near all of your paving budget. Um, EMS Fire, you ended up about $30,000 better than we anticipated. So it's a continued trend. The only funds you really tend to spend, the majority of your budget are close to it. Typically are park. You spend pretty close to your full budget at park a lot of times. And um, cemetery and CCI, which is the cigarette taxes. Those three funds, you tend to spend the majority of your budget in those, okay? So let's fast forward. I want to focus on the 2018 budget because that's really what you're going to take action on here next month and, and um, October as well. So flip to page four, if you would. The way this is structured, again, it has all your funds. Each column is a fund. Uh, start with general on the far left. The top half of the page of your revenues, which your largest revenue source is property taxes, which is the first line. And if you remember, you lose, for your size, a fairly significant portion of your property taxes to circuit breaker. Right? So you don't actually realize it's unrealized revenue. For instance, in your general fund, we anticipate you'll unrealized, have unrealized revenue of almost 20% of your, of your uh, property tax, or $100,000 that you won't actually. So, your net property tax collections in your general fund is that third line, about $450,000. Okay, and if you follow that along, it's the same for all your other funds that get property taxes. The rest of the middle of the page are what we call miscellaneous type revenues. It's non-property taxes. That's things like your income taxes that you get from the county, riverboat tax, trash fees, cable frame sizing fees, uh, interest, payment of tax from your utilities, so on and so forth. So we basically add up all your revenues, and that comes to the middle line total receipts. So in the general fund, it's just over a million dollars, okay? Then we compare it to the Form 1 budgets that, that you all went through in several meetings uh, this month and last month. We summarize all those up into the categories under disbursements. So we compare your revenues to your, your total disbursements in the general fund. If you spend every single dollar you budget, is a million dollar, or a million eighty dollars. A million and eighty thousand dollars, excuse me, okay? So that would be basically if you spend every single dollar of your budget, you'd have a negative cash flow in the general fund of $70,000. But based on historical trends, that doesn't, a lot of towns I've worked with, that would concern me. Based on your historical activity, that doesn't concern me much because you never spend your budget. Does that make sense? Okay. The one point that's a look, uh, is different from previous years that I want to spend a few minutes on is if you go over to your motor vehicle highway fund, the third one over, do you notice how there's no property tax in that first line? We're not, if you look at previous years, you've always put property tax dollars into your MDH fund, okay? If you go down under disbursements, then you notice in MDH, all this budget is $145,000 for capital. That's paving and, and sidewalks that you budgeted. You always typically have some salaries and wages budget out in MDH, um, some repairs, maintenance, supplies, things of that, that nature. 
there was a new law instituted for this year with the gas tax. When they raised the gas tax 10 cents, um, they did two things. One, they said you can no longer spend any police salaries, fuel, supplies out of MDH. You guys, I don't think we're doing that anyway, but that hurt some towns. The second piece was they said you now have to restrict half of the state distribution, so not property taxes, the state distribution of basically gas tax. 50% of that must be used for paving or paving related type projects. And Lisa's aware of this, this is all that paperwork and stuff the State Board of Balance went through at your last conference. That's a new, a new law, okay? So there's two ways we've suggested you can simplify making sure you stay in compliance with that. One is what we've shown you here, just move all of your non-paving related budget to general and move the corresponding property tax that pays for that to general. So now it's not in that restricted area anymore and it's just a new department in your general fund. So basically everything that is street before now is just in your general fund as street, as a street department within the general fund, okay? But we didn't, it's not unfunded. We moved the corresponding revenue that used to pay for that, that was property taxes, over to the general fund as well, okay? So that's why you'd see your general fund property tax revenue is higher than the previous year as well. Then all that leaves, if you go back to the motor vehicle highway uh, column again, all that leaves is a rev revenue source in the motor vehicle highway. You see the 73,812, that's that state distribution. And we're comparing that to your total paving budget of 145,000. So what that tells you is, if you really just wanted to use only the state distribution, you could only afford $75,000 a year in paving. Okay? That doesn't mean that's all you can do. That means if you really want to do the full 145,000, we have to give some of that general fund property tax money back. MBH, which, which worsens the general fund outlook but improves the MBH outlook. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of a law. This is a totally new law. This is going to be the first year we deal with it. Now is that including maybe the 40% increase? Or no? This includes the increase. The 73,000 is, okay. 73, is a reflection that's higher than previous years. That's a reflection right. of the 10 cent gas tax. That's your piece that's getting distributed. So that is a higher revenue number. Okay. Now, the other thing that I would I would advise you on, and did you guys have you guys done have you guys applied for the Phoenix Crossing hearing mm -hmm. pass? Did you guys do it last year? We just applied this year. Okay. So if you you have $145,000 budget, if you happen to get a community crossing grant for 2018, you would double, you could double your state income there and basically afford your whole $145,000. That's not built in here. This does not assume you get that grant. Right. So that's the reason I'm not overly concerned because there's a lot of there's a lot of money in that program this year that I would think your chances of getting it in 2018 would also be good. Does that make sense? So you basically can double that 73,000 at no cost to your, actually more than double because you guys are a small enough community to get 75 cents on the dollar. So does that make sense, how that works? Yeah. We're talking about though, if we wanted to increase that, take property tax out of general fund and move it back over? Yes. We just said we couldn't. So go to the yellow line, it, do you see how, how uh, general is a negative 70,000 and MDH mm -hmm. is a negative 70,000? You're not fixing the overall problem. All you're doing is saying, okay, if we move some from general revenue back, our motor vehicle highway looks better, but our general looks worse. It's just putting it from one, it, yeah. it's not creating any new money. It's just which fund do you want to look better mm -hmm. on paper? Yeah. The other option you have, to, that's the way we did your budget here, but it's very easy to change it. The other option is, um, you can departmentalize your MBH fund, so we can move those costs, those salaries and wages and all that back to MBH, and then create two departments within your MBH fund. One that's basically the restricted money that you can only use for paving, and the other one's the unrestricted money that you can use for everything else. And you move property tax money back to MBH. It's the same concept, it's just you want it all in your MBH fund or you want it in your general fund. That's kind of the decision you gotta make. It makes no difference to the state. It's really on Lisa in terms of paperwork. <laughs> and when we did our form one, we did not budget for um, any major salaries out of MBH. Right. No health insurance, no perks. Right. You know what I mean? So. He's rolling up along. Following his advice. <laughs> the, the reason I, I like the getting rid of everything except for your paving and MBH is because then it's very simple for you all on a cash flow basis to see 
how much you get from the state that's restricted basically and if, if this community crossings grant continues in the in future years you can always double that money or maybe even get you know 75 cents on the dollar it makes it very easy for you to see on paper can we afford our paving or can we not if, if you kind of just and you'll see them in separate funds so even though it's under the general and still like with the police is its own separate fund and you know the ems and the, all that comes out in general you'll still see it as a separate yep. that'll be called street now and, yeah and the general fund. if you if you follow the cash flows along like i said i'm not overly concerned with general because that's actually lower than actually general looks better than 2017 did for 2018 in the H, I'm not overly concerned because hopefully you'll get that community crossing grant. If you don't get the community crossing grant, then the decision becomes right. we just cut back on some paving, yeah. probably. Mm -hmm. So I'm not overly concerned there. Um, EMS Fire has a negative cash flow anticipated. It's not a huge negative cash flow compared to your cash balances. And in the past, you've underspent there as well. So I'm not. That's one that maybe I would, if you could reduce a little bit, would be one to look at. But I'm not too concerned. The one that I'm really more concerned with is park because remember park is one that you a lot of times spend close to your budget so you only bring in if you go to that total receipts uh in the middle of the page on the far right column park and recreation you bring in about ninety thousand dollars a year to your park okay to your park fund the budget proposed for 2018 is 150,000. okay so if, if things stay true to Nate stay true to historical and you spend all that you're basically going to spin down and actually go in the red in your park budget. the way this stands right now the dlgf would actually cut your park budget when you submit it to them because you don't have enough money to support that okay so there's two options you have really to, to do that one is you give park more property tax money so you take tax money out of general or storm or ems or one of those other ones that gets property tax and you give it to park or you got to reduce your park budget within kind of closer to your revenue one, one of because you have the same ish, issue and set and we've actually been we talked about we've been talking about this for several years at park park is the one that you you're actually if you spend close to budget you're starting to draw that cash balance down this would be the first year they've actually cut your budget in park because go, go back to um Go back to page two. I want to make sure this, this is kind of clear to everyone. Go back to page two in the far right column, the park and recreation budget. Okay. Again, you, in 2017, this year, you'll bring in about $85,000 in the park. Their budget was $136,000. So a negative cash flow of about $50,000 if they spend their entire budget in 2017. The DLGF approved that budget because remember what's the rule as long as there's a dollar in the bank at the end of the year. They don't care if it's a good budget, they just care that you have a dollar in the bank at the end of the year. So they approved that budget, but what that would do is that would take you from a $68,000 January 117 cash balance. If Park spends all their budget, you'd end the year about $17,000. So it's spend down $50,000 of their banked up cash. So that's why the DLGF approved it that year. Now fast forward to page four in 2018, where you have that same story, but now you don't have that cash balance to rely on, so you'd actually be going in the negative $45,000. The DLGF won't let you go in the negative, so they would cut this budget at $45,000 unless you give them more money or cut it on your own. Does that make sense? We have to do that before the next, before we adopt the budget, right? If you want to give them more money? Or, or cut it. Yeah, if you want to give them more money, you have to do that before we submit your Form 3 online, which is, right. um, I think, like the first week of September, maybe second week of September. If you want to cut their budget, you have to do it by then. If you want to cut their budget, or if you just submit it as is, the DLG is going to cut it automatically for you. So, if that makes sense. They won't, they won't, um, they won't approve this budget. They will let you go and do that. Exactly. So that's kind of the one, I guess, decision. It sounds like you've already given me feedback on the general and the HSU. So the one decision you really need to make here in the next few weeks is, how do you want to handle this park shortfall? It's either more property tax money or we reduce the budget. Okay. The third piece to that is, uh, to throw a little bit more confusion here, if park were to come back and to say, 
Yeah, but we know our 2017 budget, we're not going to spend all of it. Like they say, well, we budgeted 150000 which showed we were going to spend, we we're going to go $50,000 negative for the year in 2017. And they say, yeah, we know we're not going to do this $40,000 thing we had budgeted. So we're going to bank that money for our 2018 budget. That's fine, but the DLGF, remember, they already given you the approval to spend that whole 150000 You have to do paperwork called a reduction of appropriation and file it with the DLGF that basically says, take away our approval for 2017 for this 40,000, so it goes to our bottom line so we can get our 2018 budget approved. They can do that. So it really comes down to two options. They either gotta cut the 2018 budget or you gotta cut the 2017 budget formally with the DLGF or give them more money. Make sense? Mm -hmm. The rest of the funds, um, if you follow back to page five, you have some negative, uh, some small negative cash flows, but nothing that's uh, of concern to me. It's comparable to previous years. Park is really the one that I think you guys need to kind of make a decision on. It's probably longer than 15 minutes, but. <laughs> so we're good other than that one decision we need to make before September 1st. If you give them more money, cut the 2017 budget formally, or we'll cut the 2018. <coughs> but if you give them more money, then the general goes further into the red. General EMS or one of those right. other, you have to pick one of those other funds, is yeah, going to be hurt by it. I'll take it from the police. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> 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 Anything else? Yeah, just one more thing. Um, it's not really in the budget, but I just want to make sure that we have all the funds that we need. I got over here twice a day. Get those free to you. Yeah, so we have the money for the rest of the year. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. Same. Um, I know what they want to do, and I'll let you know. Thank you. Can you say for anything else or any other? All right. You get in touch, and we'll uh, finish them in the budget after you get to be done. next week. Thank you. Thank you. Happy night, everybody. Yeah. 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 Move on to old business. We'll do a trading report. Folks, the only thing I have to, I and mean, it's really nothing to even tell you, but just I have not heard anything from uh, the property owners at 405 South Michigan Street. I haven't heard anything from Chuck DeWitt. Um, the, the kind of uh, what we talked about last time was to give them until uh, 1st of September. So if we've not heard anything from them by the time of our next meeting, he's letting you know and asking, what do you want the next step to be? Uh, so I'm just letting you know, not heard anything from them. Don't know that Chuck has either. Nobody's been in touch with me about any of it. Um, wait and see. That's all I had to really report. Well, simple. Yeah, simple. Accept the attorney's report. Second. Everyone motion and second to accept the attorney's report. All in favor say aye. 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 Mark Gumball, MCDC report. <coughs> okay, uh, on marketing, we had the Swan Lake Resort Conference Center. We did that uh, August 16th, which would be today. Uh, we need to, side note, take, I need to like the superintendent. Yes. Okay. Our site proposals. Five proposals were sent out. Danish, Venus, Quartz, Wonder, and Blue Sky for the shell building. Under product development, the Argus Manufacturing Center, the site engineering was out there on July 18th, so they started that. Jerry met with uh, Suzanne Umbaugh and Jamie Lindstrom on uh, utilities. IEDC uh, did issue the approval letter, and I wanted to mention that loose lips sink ships sometimes. <clears throat> there was a major problem on a holdup on this. We almost didn't get it because a council member said, if we ended up with J-turns, it's no big deal. So IEDC almost did not issue an approval letter for the 400,000 from Region Cities. But we did get that done. 
And we also passed the resolution on the 11th at our last meeting uh, for uh, the loan with Lake City Bank. So the manufacturing site is on the move. It will happen. Uh, things are not moving all about that. Any additional questions or concerns you've got about that, uh, please let me know. I know I don't. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Board openings, Marsh County <coughs> Tourism, Plan Commission, Redevelopment Commission. Anybody interested? Submit a letter to Lisa and we'll look them over. Does anyone else have any other old business? EMS building's moving pretty good. Yep. yep. We're hoping to have the um, electric water plumbing done before next week when, when Dean gets back so he can start driving. <coughs> so hoping to have that done. We have the orchard extractor and dry rodent there. And Mark Thompson has submitted the paperwork to get part of the grant money for payment. And once it's installed, we get a picture of the complete installation and submit it and I'll pay the rest of the grant money. So thanks, Jay, for the spirit of that. Mm -hmm. So Friday he's gonna start putting the fence up. The old library. Oh, yeah, the old library. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he's going to be removing the asbestos out of there Friday and then Saturday the fence will go up and then a couple weeks after that he'll start. I think it's uh, August 28th. Yeah. Start about the old library coming back. Anyone got any other old business? Any new business? I did not get a quote from Mr. Trophy yet. I called, um, I guess she's been subbing, right, at, for the flagpole. I never got the quote. So um, I just pulled one off the internet. They run anywhere from $1,200 to $500 for a 25 foot pole. This was the cheapest one I could find. It comes in three pieces and free shipping. You can have it sent by UPS so it doesn't have to be specially shipped. Um, if you want a fiberglass pole which lasts longer, they can be upwards of 2200 so, I did look for them, I just haven't gotten a solid piece. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, from the ranges that I found, it was $500. Mm -hmm. This one was the cheapest one that I found. Um, and then it ranged up from there, depending on if you wanted it coated, if you want a light on it, if you want, you know, what, what accessories you want with it. And that does not include, this is just the pole, yeah. not the base or the ball on the top or any of that stuff. Okay. Okay. And I don't know, you know, I mean, that's, I don't know how much you want to budget for one. So. I have Keep going on that then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, anybody else have any other new business right now? Jamie, you got any new business? I've got a meeting tomorrow on uh, just for some infrastructure down on 17th Road for the shell building. So that's moving forward. See where, we're, see where we're at. Go on to your department head reports if you got anything else. Anybody got any questions for Jamie? The uh, reservoir's about done. Uh, tested the fire um, pump this week. And everything's good to go. They should be controlled down and should be done there. A couple other things that were done. Uh, in the water plant, there was a couple issues that we, we had fixed as well. So I think they're I think they're done for a while, hopefully. I met with um, Gary Knight today at ITAMCO. <clears throat> He's very happy that, that that fire pump is done and installed now too. So.
Anything else? Anything else? For Jamie? If not, good job, thanks. PD. Um, just a few things. For the month, we have 16 criminal arrests, 25 traffic arrests. Um, there's a typo on your report that I submitted for code enforcement for the, the year, the total, 17, that should be, as of date, 243, not 17. So you're aware of that. <laughs> we have 17 criminal investigations. The only other thing I would like to add, I guess, would be for the council maybe to uh, visit the uh, junk and abandoned vehicle code. Um, I've had complaints about some junk vehicles in town and the way I interpret the code, they're, they're not junk um, by the code. They may look like they're junk, but they, if they run, I mean, so if, how picky you guys want to get on, on that, I guess it'd be up to you. Are you follow me? Mm -hmm. George. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, our test has always been when the, the attorney before Derek was, if it's operable and if it, if it can run, then it's not considered a job. I think we've, we, we've, so addressed, we've addressed this uh, yeah. years before that, well, maybe it shouldn't be John, maybe you should add a vehicle that needs to be moved. Once a quarter. Well, there's nothing that from says yeah. code like that. And uh, well, where is it? And there's something in there that says 72 hours. I mean, if a vehicle. That's once they tag it. Once they tag it, it has well, to be if, if it's abandoned, that would be like someone leaving a vehicle on the street or someone's property, and, and no one's claiming it. Basically, that a would fall under the same as this follows the state statute. Basically, a vehicle in a person's yard. If they could be working on or waiting for parts or whatever, that as long as it's in their yard, it's not really considered abandoned or any junk. Or, I mean, we don't know if it's junk. Well, I give you a prime example. Here's a prime example. There's one on Church Street. We always get complaints about. It has several vehicles in the yard. Um, West Church Street. Okay. They all run. They're not junk. Right. If they're not plated, just because you have a vehicle that's not plated, it doesn't necessarily mean it's junk. You read the code. Right. So. You want me to enforce that more aggressively, I'd like to change the code. I think we should look at those codes. What is the procedure when you give somebody a verbal warning? How long do they have? Is if I give somebody a verbal warning, I'll go back the next week when I'm coming on and check it again, and, and I'll give them a written warning, usually, generally speaking. How long do they have to comply with the written well, warning? Well, that's... For the, are we talking about the junk vehicles or just anything? Any code enforcement. The junk vehicles is 72 hours. Okay. okay. So, that's and that's got to be a written demand and a notice on the vehicle. And I've never towed one before. Come close, but never have. And usually, if you work with the people, and they usually get them out of their junk. It may take a little while, but they usually do. Now, some of them will just make them operable. That makes sense. Yeah. May I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, anything in the code about if it's not plated, then it's considered. It, it, yes. It, it can use, be used as a factor say, with the code. The way the code states, it can be used as a factor, but it's not the determining factor. The reason that the plates and insurance didn't come into effect was because years ago people had campers. They played them and insured them for six months, mm -hmm. and then they would set. And so they were getting tickets for, for something months. that wasn't junk that they did use, but they only used it in the summertime. Okay. And there again, this is just my thoughts. If the vehicle's setting in your yard and the weeds are growing up underneath it, yeah. then that's maybe not junk, but unacceptable. Now, if you have, like, I have no car that's been in my driveway for six or seven years, but it tires are all up, there's no weeds under it, and I can move it, but it sets in my driveway. Now, if it's sitting on blocks, we've talked about that before. If it's sitting up on jack stands, Mr. Stafford had the same thing in his backyard. He had that old vehicle, he had a tarp over it. All the tarp got all ripped and was flopped around. Told him if he put a regular car cover on it and kept the weeds out from underneath it, it was fine. So that's what he did. 
We have people who have the same car in the same driveway with the same flat tire for six months. That's, you know, the, what's it take to go out and air up a tire and, and move well, it? I agree. That, that's, and I'll be the one, I, I want them to complain to Corey, so that's why he's asking. <laughs> well, and I'm not, it's just, to me, it's just kind of subjective, the, the standard, and I'd like to have it, but if you want me no, to, be to cool. isolate, force it, then because it's it's different than it needs to be than you going over in a vehicle. I mean, I can make a vehicle run. That doesn't mean it's going to move. Yeah. I mean, you need to look at. If you look at Culver's code, it's a little bit more in depth. Um, but then again, it's some of it's kind of off the wall too. But see, I don't think you want to get into where you're enforcing what a vehicle looks like. Right. If, I mean, if you've got a vehicle in the weeds that you know has been there for a long time. You've I've had that happen before where they pump it up and the one you're specifically talking about, they pumped up the tire and they moved it to the driveway. Well, it's in the driveway, it's legal, it's a flat tire. Okay. But it's not, are you following me? Yep. How many verbal warnings do you give on something? I've seen one here with trash. We have two verbal warnings. I drove by there tonight. And it's Which one are you talking about? 336 West Church Street. 336, so that's been given a ticket. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably in trouble for that. Long story. Well, here's this 336 West Marshall written demand, but that was 7 4. That was a month ago. Which one? Well, if that's. That's the one. If we're talking about the same property? I'm not sure if, if that's the same or if that's different, but I don't see a written. Well, there was one where I, gave, where I, I sent, them a, sent them a letter because you can't get a hold of them. It's a certified letter. They wouldn't accept the letter. That's the kind of stuff I run into. Yeah, I can understand that. So it's tracking people down, too. So that's what we did. Okay. That one, if we're talking about the same one, that one's issued a ticket to sell it. I mean, the weeds are growing up through the trash. Weeds are all around the house. I mean, it's one of those where they mow through the middle. And well, we're the about weeds. The same one. Yeah. Are we? Okay, yeah. Then I was taking the. Okay. And those are the kind that just make the. Town Again, trash. I got to find them to take them or send it in the mail when they don't accept the certified letter. Then. They know the system. Believe me. <laughs> I have one more thing too. 109 North Maple. Um, if the council doesn't want me to enforce the no parking on there, I think the council needs to amend the code. Is it to corner of Maple? Yes. Because they're parking on the sidewalk still after we let them right. not. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But we told them they were going to. They would be allowed to park there, but now they're parking still across the sidewalk. It was the other day when I worked. So, yesterday? Then they get a ticket for parking on the sidewalk because you're not Yes, forcing. but it, I still think we're not going to force it. We still need to amend the code. Isn't there a sign there? I'm going, not sure. Going east, isn't there a sign? There's no parking? That's the one you guys said that there's no parking, but you said to not enforce it. Because we've got to move the sign. Yeah, so shouldn't we move the sign? If the sign's should move, then. But the code still sign. says no parking on the street, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So it sounds like we need to visit these codes. I agree. Again? Yeah. yeah. Well, I've never. I never. Come on, Mark, you were in on it with me. <laughs> we did parking once, never again. <laughs> I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I just try to do it properly. And because they're in, in like the town of Culver, the town of Rockers, and these are their chapters in their code. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we are, they are, we're, do we have any idea of when we will get some of that information? I don't know. I can call them. But I didn't get to my first bill, so they are working on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Thank you, Corey, because I know this is a lot of work. Yeah. So thank you. A little bit, but <laughs> I'll, I know you just want to be the same with everything. Yes, you want to be fair with everybody. Yes. 
Well, somewhere we need to talk about this code enforcement far as uh, maybe get somebody to be code enforcement versus having these guys do it. Or, uh, no, we kind of talked about that. Okay. I think Corey. We do want to have a special meeting, Corey, of all sit down. Yeah. yeah. Here. So I don't mind doing it. It's just, I just want clear direction and clear code. You know, I'll do whatever the council asks me to do. But well, he's been coming on some of these days off and putting some time in. And, you know, it, it's that's his free time. He comes up here and does that. I, and I know he's not complaining, and I know you're not. I, I'm just trying to help you. I, I think we need to. Didn't we need uh, 'Cause right now our town does need some if, if, right. if I can add something to it, okay. um, for example, the guys working at night, um, I would rather them do what they're doing now. Uh, they do respond if someone complains about you know, because there's a whole gamma of code, um, they'll respond to it, but I would rather them be patrolling the streets, arresting people, like protecting the town station, yes. than sitting on station writing code letters or Look at you. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they still do code. I mean, they still right. Yeah, yeah. Just not as much. I mean, in their defense. What? Wonder if you want to have a meeting on fire. Uh, I think I might. Might come on duty. <laughs> Six a.m. <laughs> Five a.m. On a Saturday. <laughs> 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 How long before they get The council is aware that some of the building stuff is out of our, our league, yes, correct? Right. Right. I mean, right. you know. But that's why we're working with Marshall County, too. So. Yeah. Thanks, Corey. You're welcome. Fire and EMS, you've got your fire in there. I just want to throw a, a plug out there for our fire and EMS and equipment fire Sunday morning. Um, we had a structure fire here in town. It actually went very smooth, um, which we hope that they all do. Plymouth responded. Luckily, we did need need them. Sometimes, you know, it was right during church. We had a lot of the guys go outside of town for church, so we got down to the station and there was five of us, and I was like, this isn't good. We called Plymouth, and before Plymouth got down there, we probably had 20 guys down there. And it, uh, very lucky, uh, minor damage. Jamie showed up for our utilities, which is uh, kind of a pain because he's cleaner bourbon, so. By the time he gets the call, it's, uh, it's a little bit rough on him, but uh, it went well. And uh, just wanted to put a plug out there for everything that went well with the equipment. We got to thank the town for the equipment they supply us because, it, and it it, would, it just was good. It was a good it was a good Sunday for us all things considered. But. No, no major damage. It guys looked good. I'm the doctor when you guys came back. It looked good. I mean, we have a fire department. Anyway, with that, uh, motion to accept department head reports. Police was there too. Not that they were good. <laughs> Rodney was down there. So. I move to accept department head reports. No, I'll second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Move on to claims. Like real. <laughs> Claim numbers 913 through 984 for August 16th, 
the um, total docket is $270,290.88. The top five claims are as follows. Uh, number one is a town of Argus, the TIF funds, we put them back into the regular bank account. Um, the State Board of Accounts had said at one time that they wanted them in separate bank accounts, and so we had moved them. And so we found out that we could do it the way we were doing it with a separate line item, so we just moved them back. Unfortunately, because it shows up as a claim, that's why it's your number one claim. So um, the second one is the Town of Argus payroll. It was $32,678.65. Number three is Weedling Brothers at $25,445. Number four is Control Dynamics at $12,268. And number five is the Federal Reserve for payroll number 16 at $6,717.73. These top five claims total $227,787.20, and they represent 84% of the total docket. Questions for Lisa? Weasley Brothers, they the new trash company then? No, well, it's for the <laughs> wastewater we pumped out the storage tank. They're the ones oh, that are doing they, it. For they, us. Yeah. When you guys going to paint and get all that? Well, they did that, but while they were here, we had them just clean out the tank too. So okay. we should be good for a while. And then, you know. Instead of Merrill Brothers? Yeah, they, they, they're out of it. And the way I understand everything down there is up. You got all the platforms. You got the whole in yep. wide. You got everything that's looking good. Yep. And they're in the process of sandblasting and painting one of the tanks right now. So they should be done Tuesday, or Wednesday next week. It's moving along pretty good. Except things. Make a motion to accept the claim document, 913 through 984. Second. There's a motion to accept the claims, 913 through 984, and an amount of $270,290.88. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everyone. There's nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. For a second. I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> motion carried.